Let's take a closer look at one of the voxels in this contrast map. Remember I have the overlay as my beta weight map and right here I'm going to actually right click, jump to XYZ and enter 52, 3.612. You can see here that for this contrast the overlay, the beta weight is negative. It's about negative 1.08. Recall that the contrast is visual minus auditory. And so in this case, it's actually the auditory that's greater than the visual. Okay. You'll also notice, and I'm not going to go into it right now, but if you were to look at the overlays, well, I will go into it right now. If you look at the overlay for the B-roll coefficient, it's 2.3, and for the auditory coefficient, it's 3.4. So both of them are positive beta weights. It's just when you take the contrast of visual minus auditory, it's going to be negative because auditory is actually greater than visual. It's, it's important to check that out just to see what's actually driving that contrast, what's driving that effect. Okay, so we're at those voxel coordinates and we're gonna open up another Avni viewer. And for this underlay, we're gonna select all runs.ft. So this is a concatenated data set of all of our functional runs. Okay. So again, it's the scale to kind of blurry thing, <clears throat> but there are a total of 450 time points, three runs of 150 time points each. I'm gonna press M twice in here just to focus on one voxel and press A to auto scale. And also in this, I'm gonna set the X, Y, Z to 52, 3.6 and 12. So we're looking at the same plot in both of these controllers. All right, one thing we want to do here is go to opt, select grid, and then choose so that we're going to have a break every 150 time points just to show you that there's one each run. And colors, etc. I'm going to make the thickness a little bit bigger too. I'll use thick lines. Okay, cool. Now let's go to FIM, pick ideal. Let's check out what the VREL looks like. What does that look like for our ideal response? All right, so here's what it looks like. It seems to be increasing at the same spots where, you know, there are some other spikes in the actual uh, fitted time course, or sorry, in the, the, the scaled time course. So it's positive. And if we select the auditory reliable, it's also positive, but it shifts a little bit. Okay, so it's visual reliable, auditory reliable. So they're both positive, but it looks like on average, the auditory reliable spikes are a little bit bigger. So they're gonna get a little bit more beta wave, right? Let's overlay the fitted time series on here by clicking on opt, tran 1D, and data set number N. Click on input one, and then choose data set, choose the fit TS. So the fitted time series, which is a linear sum of all the regressors we put into our model. That includes, I'm gonna select dark blue, that includes the regressors of interest, the motion parameters, and the polynomials to model any drift. So here's what it looks like, and what you'll see, it's, well, it's a little bit hard to see here, but all of the, the heights from bottom to top for the visual are the same across this voxel. That's one of the assumptions of our model. And the heights from bottom to top for the auditory stimuli are also the same for all the auditory repetitions. So we're just taking the contrast of those two and comparing them. You can see here that's a pretty smooth fit. It's a pretty good fit. Not surprisingly, it's a pretty robust block design comparing uh, somatosensory modalities. So it's, it's nothing too complex, nothing too subtle that we're trying to detect here. But that's what gets fit to the actual time course and then it takes, it estimates what the beta weight should be to make this the best fit as possible. So that's the relationship between our X matrix and 3D convolve and what the model is trying to fit.